Hi. Ah, sorry. We just having a look at the things I wanted to say in this presentation, but I think honestly we don't need it. But it's going to be very, very short. In this presentation, we're going to talk about fuels, which can be used in fuel cells. It's very simple. We basically can use anything that can be oxidized by oxygen, but mm, that would be very boring. So we're going to have a little talk, you and me. Let's have a look. Uh, fuel cells, as you may know already, are electrochemical devices which allow us obtain an energy, electrical energy, directly from uh, the redox reactions involving a fuel and a component, usually oxygen. This is the most common reaction which we will find in fuel cells, which is the oxidation of hydrogen by oxygen. In this case, hydrogen would be the fuel used. But we could use, in principle, any component which could be oxidized by oxygen. This is anything in this part of this table. Hmm? in order to perform an electrochemical reaction and then to uh, build a fuel cell. However, in practice, there are only a few components which are going to be used as fuels in fuel cells. The king of the fuels, the most important, is hydrogen. Hydrogen, this molecule here, is um, a very good candidate because um, its oxidation with oxygen only mm, gives water as the product, which means that the environmental impact is nearly null. It's very good because it has a very high uh, energy density, the molecule itself, and its oxidation is quite nice from an electrochemical point of view. But there are some drawbacks related to the use of hydrogen. It's a gas, and because it's a gas, we will require high volumes to have a lot of energetic density in terms of, the, of all the volume. Um, so, what we do is um, cool it, uh, pressurize it, and then we have liquid hydrogen instead of gas hydrogen. For storage, this is better, but it's still very expensive. And because it's highly flammable, uh, there are some risk problems related to the use of hydrogen, especially in vehicle operations. So, we may want to look for an alternative, and I have to say that I really think this could be a very good one. We could use alcohols instead of hydrogens. Why? Well, just because alcohols like methanol or, or ethanol are liquid at the room temperature in standard conditions and everybody knows that it's very easier, it's much easier storing a liquid than a gas. So we could use the same infrastructure as for gasoline for these kind of components. Many vehicles in Brazil and other countries use engines, thermal engines, but engines which uh, are fed by um, ethanol, by alcohol, and they work very well. So this could be an interesting candidate to substitute hydrogen. However, life is hard, and so the use of alcohols as well. Because um, we may produce some CO2 uh, in, this, in its oxidation, which, you know, is some of these um, gases that we want to avoid to have in the atmosphere because of global warming. And among other things, we may have some mass transfer effects, especially in the electrolyte, which may make everything a bit slightly more complicated. So this, which can be studied further on in this course, this must be studied with further detail. As I said before, we can use nearly everything to be oxidized by oxygen and natural gas or other hydrocarbons are another candidate. And the reactions are quite similar. Once again, we will face the um, obtainance of CO2 in the, in the cathode um, and some problems will be arising, I mean, because of mass transfer problems. 
This is not such a clean reaction again, but they can work. I mean, the point is that once again, it will have a higher environmental impact than if we use hydrogen. Um, we try to draw here a um, scheme of how we can use different fuels in fuel cells. As I said before, hydrogen can be used directly, must be very clean in some, in some applications. Um, but we can use other components like natural gas or ethanol or methanol. Uh, but if we don't want to use them directly in the anode, which will be this part okay, of the fuel cells, remember, we can first uh, reform it to form some hydrogen and then use this hydrogen in the anode. Or we could even use natural gas to form the alcohols and then use them in the anode. I mean, there are a lot of possibilities that we can use if we want to combine different fuels. Mm? Well, mm, as I said before, it's going to be a short presentation, um, but we wanted to, tell, to say as well uh, that depending on the application that you have, you may want or you may require to use a different uh, fuel. For special crafts, like special missions of the NASA, um, hydrogen was a very good candidate, a uh, liquid uh, hydrogen, because um, you could usually store them into the special crafts. But uh, in terrestrial operations, um, the tendency is to use different components, like gasoline or methanol in light vehicles, and even some other heavier um, fuels in some applications related to heavy vehicles or military applications. But So it's very important to know what is the design of your application in order to decide what is the fuel that you're going to be using. In conclusions, um, we don't need any piece of paper to say that, uh, you can eventually use anything you want to be oxidized by oxygen to use it as a fuel in fuel cells, but there are only a few components that are uh, used in practice. The most important is hydrogen and it's because it has a very low environmental impact but they ha I mean, its use has a lot of drawbacks especially related to the storage and re other, other risk specifications. As an alternative, um, during the last years um, many different fuel cells have been designed to use other components such as methanol or ethanol or other alcohols with low temperature and with low molecular weight or natural gas. So I think that that's it. Thank you very much for your attention again and I hope you enjoy this one. Thanks.